Today, here in South Africa, we are actually looking at our biggest South African cat, the lion, and we want to anesthetize two males today to do a general health check. But at the same time, we're going to use the opportunity to collect as many samples for research purposes as possible. And one aim will be to collect semen of, this, of these boys to put it in the new developed cryobank here at the Kutula. So they can basically lock it like that. If they do catch it, breaks. Yeah. You can sometimes hear them click, but they fix over and they you see that it's like a spring mechanism. So they can lock it, and then once they retract it, they leave it, and then it goes back. So you can feel it. It's, um, some of the smaller ones, you can actually feel it better. This one's this muscle is quite strong, but you can see it's, it kicks in and then it sits in there. So. A normal house cat can't fix them, right? Um, yeah, but not as, as not strong as this one, but it works on exactly the same principle. We open the, the mouth a bit further. Those teeth actually work like scissors, so they, uh, that's what they cut, they cut skin and stuff with. So. These big uh, canines is basically for holding on and, and suffocating the animal, but they actually cut the meat with those um, canine teeth. His teeth is looking very good, and I've got a little bit of, it's going with age, but I've got a sharp reach on the back side. So Really interesting, you'll see all lines like this. If you look, there's a nice little blue, it's like a powder blue ring around around them. So. And then obviously this the white one's eyes is lighter than the, the normal brown ones. The brown has got a bit of a darker eye. And you'll see that I've got a round people, unlike a house people, unlike a house cat that's got a slit, I've got a round one. It's responsive to light, can you guys see that so? Yeah. So that was very exciting this morning. We had the, the very first lion here in our new center and it was super cool to work under these brilliant conditions. The procedure was very quick, much quicker than we usually take because everything is in place and in order and um, I'm really happy with how everything went. We had a very good start and I think the sample we are working on, on the, uh, now, the spring sample has been really high quality so we're not now working on freezing it and I'm um, looking forward to do more lines in the future. Uh, as we've seen, 
seen the UCC develop, it's not taking only a year, it's taking over a decade of development of things put into practice, you know, to develop what we see today. And this is not only for Tuna, this is for the entire global community, so that they can be able to share and protect the species that we have. Who's to know that in the next 10, 20 years, what we see around us in the natural environment won't be there. And the question is, what are we all doing about it? I'm a German veterinarian and I qualified uh, 10 years ago and have ever since specialized in zoo and wildlife medicine and here especially again on the reproduction of zoo and wildlife. My name is Elsa, I'm a reproductive biologist. I specialize in spermatology. So after we've collected the semen and our general health check, we'll be processing it, doing it through a process procedure of cryopreservation and doing some evaluations on it to make sure that the quality and the vitality stays intact and then bank it in the new biobank. If we look at the tremendous decline in uh, large mammal species, African species, one is really filled with the emotion of sadness. But unfortunately sadness and emotion is not going to save these animals. And it's for this reason that we here at Ukutula decided as a combination of the 10 years of research that we've been involved in to build this beautiful research center and conservation center that you see behind me and uh, this is to enhance the work that is done by researchers a beautiful procedure room a laboratory and also a biobank we hope to be able to store the genetic material the reproductive material of these endangered species for preservation into the future should something catastrophic happen to these animals that one has something to fall back to. We also focus very strongly on education. We feel that education is probably one of the strongest tools in promoting awareness about the decline of these animal species and also what we as humans are doing to our environment and the natural habitat of these animals which is also declining at an alarming rate. We trust that the research that is undertaken here at Ukutula and the storage of the reproductive material will be one practical step towards saving some of the species which are currently so endangered that it really leaves one wondering how many years we, we still have the privilege of having these animals with us.